This week on Crossbeam. Playing a game of chicken. Christians and Muslims agree pornography is bad for you. Catholic Church to volunteers. You will submit or else. And if you don't agree, why don't you just quit? And the spiritual side of the Olympics. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Crossfeed Religious News. I'm Pastor Dale Critchley, pastor of Shepherd of the Ridge Lutheran Church in North Ridgeville, Ohio. I'm Dr. Jim Butler, pastor of St. Luke's Lutheran Church in Dedham, Massachusetts. It's good to be back with everybody again. Uh, it's been a couple of weeks. I can't remember everything else we had going on. Last week was a neat weekend. Uh, my uh, kids and some other members of the church took my wife and I out for Mother's Day and Father's Day to see the dark night rises, and we were um, up in what's called the Lux Level. Uh, where uh, you, you just have like two seats and you have a table there and you order food and you know and you have to be over 21 so there's no kids up there so uh, you can order wine or beer with your meal and they paid for the tickets and they paid for our meal I wanted to stick them with a $30 bottle of wine but I decided I better not and then after that I went to um, Camp Pine Shore and I was the camp leader for a week with uh, 20 middle schoolers so I had a good time up there cool Cool. Well, I should mention this is our uh, July 29th episode. Uh, I just posted our July 1st one today, um, and there's another one in the can um, that I haven't posted yet. So hopefully we'll get these out soon. But uh, I've, uh, well, uh, if you want to know what's been going on in my yeah, life. It's like, like Gail's got anything going on in his life. <laughs> here's what you, if, if, if anybody wants to know, here's what you do. You, you go uh, find my sermon feed at shepherdoftheridge.org. And listen to my Micah sermon. Um, I had a, a miracle healing happen, um, and a whole bunch of other stuff. And it kind of lays it out in that sermon. Uh, it it kind of felt like God was using me the same way that He used the lives of the prophets, um, the, where their life was reflecting the message that He wanted to convey. And so it was. Uh, it's, it's been a pretty bizarre uh, experience. But uh, if anybody, just uh, go check out Micah um, at shepherdoftheridge.org. And, and speaking of, of sermons and, uh, and websites, I'm really excited. Today, uh, we got our streaming, our service streaming back up and running. Uh, it's been since October, and we've just had all kinds of problems and, and haven't been able to get it. We finally got it up and going. And, uh, and I really want to uh, just mention this for churches that are interested in doing this. All right, here's what you do. All right, there were there were, we used to use UStream and LiveStream and and they have gotten more restrictive and more restrictive and you can't control ads and all kinds of stuff. All right, here's what you do. This is all free and it's ad free. You um, you sign up for a Google nonprofit account. All right, you have to get approved. There's some hoops you have to jump through. It's a little bit difficult, but it's not bad. Uh, if you're a Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod Church, uh, there's a document that contact the info center if you don't have it already uh, that you can use to prove your tax exempt status. All right, and uh, you know I, I forget what else, what other hoops we had to jump through, but it wasn't too tough. They let you know exactly what you need. All right, you get approved for Google Apps um, for their their business level with that for free, and um, and it also opens you up to a lot of other things. And one of the things is YouTube for nonprofits. Now, YouTube for nonprofits is being used to launch their um, YouTube's new live streaming service, and they're they're sort of beta testing it with the nonprofits. Now, I, I, I can't really call it beta testing because it works beautifully. All right, they give you get um, access to a um, uh, some software I uh, can't remember what it's called off the top of my head but um, but this software is some top notch uh, video streaming software you can do picture in picture you can pull your if you use PowerPoint or, or um, some other presentation software you can pull that over the network um, and and you can 
choose particular specific windows that you want to stream. Um, it's got you can switch back and forth to different settings as far as which picture is in which picture and uh, multiple cameras. Just all kinds of capabilities. Really nice, and it's all free. You can turn off the ads. Um, you can put ads in there if you want. I mean, I wouldn't recommend it for if you're streaming a church service, but um, uh, you can. But you can also put a um, uh, if you want to put a donation box. So if people are watching the service and it comes time for the offering, they can give their offering if they so choose. Um, you put it, it's right on the side of the uh, when they're watching it on YouTube. Uh, there's a little on the sidebar. There's a little spot for. Uh, for donations and and it uses Google uh, Google Checkout and Google Wallet. Um, and Dale made that box extra big for his church. <laughs> I debated about it and I thought, you know what? Please, please. <laughs> if if people want to worship that way, I'm not going to tell them not to. You know, I I don't think there's anything wrong with that. It's if uh, you know if if nobody does, I'm, I'm more excited about the fact that we're making this accessible to people. Um, then and I frankly I, I'm not really expecting much of any um, as far as donations go. But I, you know it, it, the option was there, and I thought, well, I could turn it off or turn it on. And if you don't want it there, you can turn it off. Um, but I'm just I'm really excited about it. And if, if anybody wants to check it out, uh, our first service we we were still kind of figuring things out, and it ended up not streaming. But our second service today, um, which is our modern service, uh, that one. Uh, is there so um, our YouTube username is SOT Ridge and um, and you can go there and uh, and you can check out uh, my our, our whole service for today you can hear our worship band and uh, see me preach and uh, see how we use the PowerPoint and stuff like that and so I'm really excited we even had a baptism today so you um, see that too so um, it was yeah, it was it was really I'm I'm very very excited about it. So just after so many headaches, we finally got it up and running again. Cool. So. Oh, very nice plane. Well, let's begin with the big story for the week. Since you happen to mention Google, and uh, 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 only because well, come on, come to my how I'm picking up on Google on this, and probably the biggest story I think of this week. Um, got to be the whole thing with Chick-fil-A. Mm-hmm. And uh, we don't have any particular one story we're looking at for this. I think Dale and I both read about it till our eyes are about ready to bleed. Yeah. <laughs> um, and long story short, uh, earlier in the week, maybe even it was last week, Dan Cathy, the president of Chick-fil-A, uh, had an interview with um, <clears throat> two interviews. And that's an important thing to remember. Uh, in which uh, one of them was at the Baptist Press, in which he you know, said that we're supporters of traditional marriage, um, you know, and we're both, we're all married to our first wives, and, you know, we believe God instituted marriage, and we're supportive of traditional marriage. And that's kind of all he said. And then he was also on a radio station. I'm not sure which, what radio station was, was also interviewed. And there he said um, that we are inviting God's judgment if we want to change the definition of marriage after what God said. So he's a little bit stronger in that interview than he was in the Baptist Press one. Well, of course, now those forces of tolerance in our world um, out there, um, you know, uh, uh, in in uh, uh, the gay lobby, um, <clears throat> just exploded. And, uh, you know, how dare he say this? This is awful. And it just took off around the Internet. And then just to top it off, the mayor of our fair city, Boston, decided he was going to personally block Chick-fil-A from opening in Boston because of this – uh, intolerant attitude. Now, remember, of course, this is the same man who took part in the ribbon cutting ceremony of a mosque in which one of the imams said that gays should be either beheaded or um, stoned. <laughs> and he didn't mean by marijuana. And so he, uh, you know, uh, um, you know, so that's okay. Right. Um, on top of uh, it, and then of course it took off in Chicago, and Rahm Emanuel said it was bad. And this, of course, is the same man who two days earlier had welcomed Louis Farrakhan to his city to help <laughs> with the gang violence. I mean, like we know how wonderfully tolerant Louis Farrakhan is of people he disagrees with. Yeah, like I mean, the white you know, devils. <laughs> I, I, I had double standards up to my ears in this. Um, <laughs> And it's just kind of taken off and been one silly thing after another. Now, supposedly, if you eat a chicken sandwich, that's somehow or another making your point. I haven't figured it all out yet. 
So and uh, also uh, the Jim Henson Company, yes, uh, has also uh, spoken out against. Uh, apparently, uh, from what I read, and it was sort of piecing things together. Um, they had Muppet like sort of Happy Meal toys, kids meal toys, or something like that. Mm-hmm. And so they pulled all of that, and the money that um, that the Henson Company was giving to, or the, the whatever, however, Chick Fil A was given to the Henson Company. Yeah, for for the licensing, um, they took that money and gave it to uh, a gay rights um, right. lobby. Um, glad, but now that um, I don't know if they pulled it, I, I I think it is you know they want to break the contract. But, you know, Chick fil A can say, no, you can't get out of the contract until it's over. But, you know, then they have the right not to renew. I'm not sure where that is with the, with the lawyers or Chick fil A. I mean, that thing going, if you feel that way, goodbye. You know, mm-hmm. I don't know so, why they're turning this. But. And I also haven't seen, I haven't been to my local Chick fil A, okay, like ever. I've, I don't think I've ever eaten at a Chick fil A. I'm kind of curious. I've, you know, I've never tried them. But um, they, I saw a picture on Facebook. All right, so this is on the internet, so it must be true. <laughs> um, but it was it, it was a photo of a sign at a Chick Fil A counter that said something about a toy recall of the Muppet toys that kids could get their fingers stuck or something like that, and so they're no longer having them. And it sort of looked like they were saying, you know, we're not doing the Muppet toys anymore, and you're not in any danger, but we're not going to have them, and it's because of this recall, which sort of well, sounds. Uh, that you know, I don't know. I don't. That may have been before, or after. Could have been photoshopped. Who knows? Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, all those things could are possible. Um, but then it all kind of took place. And so this Friday is supposed to be National Same Sex Kissing Day, and at your local Chick Fil A. And um, then August first, all good Christians are supposed to show their uh, 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 support for them by going to eat at Chick Fil A. So I, you know, I'm just sitting there going. I, I, I'm really confused by all this. I mean, number one, it's some guy's business opinion. It's some business owner's opinion. Who really cares? Mm-hmm. I mean, seriously. Um, and this is where I was coming back with Google. Uh, Google has a position on same-sex marriage that I disagree with. Doesn't mean I refuse to use them. Apple Computer. I, I remember a guy complaining because uh, we were having a uh, a. a pastor's conference up in Stowe, Vermont, and one of the things I mentioned there was to do in Stowe is go visit the Gen- Ben & Jerry's factory and get a tour of Ben & Jerry's and uh, get, you know, some other, I hear their story and get some ice cream. And this guy, this about, no, it was close to 20 years ago, wrote me this long, long, long letter about how, you know, Ben & Jerry's is supporting the gay agenda and it shouldn't be, you know, you know, encouraging us to go to Ben & Jerry's and how dare you go that? And I wrote back and said, I'm just eating ice cream, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Give me some Heath Bar Crunch, okay? Little chunky monkey here, you know. But that's all it is. It's you know, um, you know. I if you're gonna go by, you know, take take every you know statement that you know everybody makes, then you're going to be never going to use anything. And by the way, you wrote this on a computer. Here's Microsoft's viewpoint. And uh, and here's Apple. So you know, either unless of course maybe you're doing you know using CPM, uh, but uh, you know I mean there there's there's reality. Mm-hmm. I mean, but it's just like you're you're talking diversity, you're talking tolerance. You know, this this is this just it's the very opposite of tolerance. I mean, isn't tolerance live and let live? Isn't tolerance like yeah, you have the right to be wrong? I mean, well, not only that. If you're talking about you know going down to your local Chick Fil A and you know and you know the whole gay kissing thing or whatever, like um, the views of the owner do not necessarily reflect the, the views of the kids saying you want fries with that, right? <laughs> well, it's not necessarily the, the, the a lot of more franchisees, so right. it may not even be the 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 you know opinion. Of, and you know, second, I mean, I don't know. This guy's devout, uh, devout. Um, Southern Baptist. I mean, does it any shock that he, you know, has the same view that the Southern Baptists do? And the fact that he said we're all married to our first wives, I, I have this idea he's not too wild about serial divorce either. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, I, I mean, I think he realizes a lot of problems there. Um, but, I mean, it just, 
You know, I mean, it was really funny when one of the reporters asked the mayor of Boston, well, why is he so bad and evil, but you're, um, you know, the, the Islamic imam was okay. And you, you know, you did the ribbon cut. He didn't want to, he, he walked away with the free to answer the question. <laughs> yeah, you know, didn't want to answer that. It's, it's politically expedient. <laughs> You know, probably. Well, not only that, but they sold them the, 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 the land that this thing's on at below market value. You know, because <laughs> the city of Boston owned it. You know, so I mean, it's just, it's just rife. Um, you know, I mean, you know, and he, and um, uh, what he said was, is, uh, uh, yeah, if they wanted to come into Boston, they would, pro- they would, they would find the uh, permits very hard to get. Hmm. You know, so, and then he was, then the, I think there's a city lawyer reminded him that would open us up for one huge lawsuit and the Massachusetts ACLU said they would sue the city if they tried it. <laughs> yeah, there is that sort of, you know, freedom of speech and freedom of religion and you know freedom of association. Freedom of so- yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, if you're gonna deny uh and you know, one guy said, you know, <laughs> And, and and one you know person said, look, if you go out and you know I disagree with what the guy said, but if you're going to deny business licenses based on an opinion, then what happens in Huntsville, Alabama, if the guy's you know a Muslim and they deny it? I mean, then you guys would have a fit about that, mm-hmm. right? You know, realize you know what what it, it all you know it all it all comes around. I don't know. I mean, can't a chicken sandwich just be a chicken sandwich? You know, that's what it comes down to. This this reminds me of those those Facebook posts where, you know, like if you love Jesus, you'll pass this on, and if you don't pass it on, you don't love Jesus. All right, all right. Live your conscience. All right? all right. If 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 it if it bothers you that certain companies take certain positions, and it you know, then go with your conscience. You know, and and. Don't do business with those companies. Keep in mind, it's going to be really hard to not do business with companies that you, you know, that you disagree with. Um, but because we live in a fallen world, and um, but you know, at, at the same time, uh, you're not earning favor with God by eating uh, greasy, fatty, really bad for you <laughs> fried chicken. <laughs> Or it's one person. Now, okay. Now, I okay. I've eaten a Chick Fil A. I can count the number of times in one hand. I once in St. Louis, maybe twice, and once in Kansas City. Okay, I you know maybe two or three times at the most. Okay, um, personally, you know, as one guy told me, he said, uh, as I, I said, can a chicken sandwich just be a chicken sandwich? He goes, well, or at least a very average chicken sandwich. <laughs> 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 this resemble a chicken sandwich. <laughs> you know, I mean, I didn't, you know, didn't think of anything to write home about. You know, the waffle fries were okay, but you know, hey, um, you know, uh, now if Culver's is another story, Culver's is good. Yeah, Culver's but, is really talk about liberal. Culver's came from Wisconsin, so yeah. I, I know Culver's very well, and uh, and uh, you know their their owner. You know, he's he's the other end of the spectrum. You know, he's he's in there with Ben and Jerry and you know and all that kind of stuff. See, but I, I will eat there every opportunity I get because see, I, I would have no food. idea about that. You know, uh, and see, that's just it. I mean, when my wife, Janice and I went out today and ate at a, uh, are you ready? Asian Asian Cajun fusion. <laughs> wow. Well, you know, I've had orange chicken at both Asian restaurants and Cajun restaurants. Yeah, well, this is this is this is this is uh, 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 Vietnamese and Cajun. Okay, this is this is real 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 real, real different. I, okay, so these people from Vietnam, there's a real good chance they are Buddhist, mm-hmm. or you know, or if, or if, if anything, you know, I'm, I didn't sit there and say, okay, please, but here is my you know questionnaire for all your social and religious issues before I'm going to sit here. Yeah. You know. I mean, I sat there and I said, this is good. I mean, you know, I, okay, now I know where Culver's is coming from. You know what? Culver's has some of the best food I've ever eaten. Mm-hmm. You know, I just love Culver. I love, I've eaten there probably also four times in my life, maybe five. But I've always had a great service, great food, and the frozen custard is out of this world. I, I um, now have the taste of a blueberry sh- malt in my mouth. Uh, <laughs> just thinking like, of it. <laughs> oh, and there's yeah, not a Culver's around here. Like the closest one's in Indiana, right? But it's off the turnpike, <laughs> so when we go to Wisconsin, <laughs> we have a stop there. 
Yeah, I know. Um, <sighs> my um, my first church, they have a school, and now they do every, they do every other Wednesday is lunch at Col- lunch from Culver's, you know. And but again, you know, it, we're not trying to. And you know, okay, and here's you know, here's here's Google. We know where Google is, but you know, Google's given Dale a great deal and a great service, and he can use it to to uh, share God's word with with people. You know, we're in a fallen world. There's no perfect thing. Man, why do we, why is everything got to be an issue? Mm-hmm. Oh, but Domino's you know? is Christian pizza, though. You know, I mean, seriously, on either the you know, you know, I just think, you know. Yeah, I, I'm actually, I, I really don't like the, you know, you can get those Christian business guides, you know, for communities and stuff like that. I yeah. really don't like those, All right? Because there's no guarantee that just because the guy's a Christian that he's going to be honest with you. Or have good service or, yeah, you know, be, right. be good. I mean, you know, right, exactly. uh, we used to get those and I never passed it out. And somebody asked me about those. I said, actually, the guy, you know, who had the franchise went out of business. You know, so, he just... Yeah. So I, you know, I, you know, I guess now we have to go out and go get our own chick, you know, our own Christian chicken Google. I don't know what it is. So here's anyway, my advice: go eat with the heathen. Tell them about Jesus the while you're doing it. Yeah, that's right. So now, okay. <laughs> Although I got it, you know, like I said, Kathy is uh, Dan. Kathy is, is, is Southern Baptist. It is interesting to see somebody who doesn't argue the doctrine of his church. Hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, he's sitting there saying, okay, I am Southern Baptist, therefore, you know, my teaching, what I'm going to be doing as a, and my business and other things are in alignment with the Baptist church. Which brings us to a, um, down in uh, Arlington, um, Virginia. And um, <clears throat> now, uh, there's a woman uh, from the Washington Post, a woman named Kathleen Riley, uh, disagrees with a male-only priesthood and disagrees with contraception. Um, and, but she teaches in a Catholic school. She teaches the CCD. And, um, and she also so teaches she, Sunday school. She, yeah, and teaches in their Sunday school. And... Um, um, there, she was upset because and resigned because she received a letter, uh, and all the teachers, lay teachers in the Arlington Catholic Diocese, received this letter that said that they had to submit to the will and intellect of the teachings of the church's leaders. Basically, this is what the church teaches. You need to take an oath in front of the um, in front of a priest that says, "I submit to this, and I will only teach what the church teaches." And she's upset about that. Okay, I, there's there's two sides, or, or I, I, there's two kind of angles that I'm looking at this. Um, on the one hand, it I'm not sure that this is the best way for the church leadership to go about such a thing. All right, uh, it it comes across as really heavy-handed, and I think that it'd be much better for individual priests to talk to. Um, to their volunteers if there's concerns about these sort of things and and just say um hey you know where you at are there are there questions that you have are there areas where you disagree let's talk about those and um and you know if you do disagree uh on these issues um i i really need you to to teach what the church teaches on, on these issues because that's what or a Catholic Church, you know, and and just just sit down and talk with them about it. I mean, I've got I've got people that that teach um, Bible classes here that um, that disagree with the Lutheran Church of Missouri Synod on certain topics, all right? And they know that, and I know that, all right? And they know where their teachings are different, or their understandings are different, you know, from our official teachings, all right? You and have so, members of your church, Dale. I am just disgusted. <laughs> you probably give them communion. You probably tell them Jesus loves them. I do both, yeah. Um, <clears throat> and there's some of my leaders too, <laughs> and, uh, and and very highly respect. Probably the most respected people in my congregation, um, or among them anyway. And uh, so anyway, I you know um, I've I've had I've talked to them about it and. 
and I know where they differ and and they know that I know that and we've talked about it and um and you know what we're okay with that and they when they um lead a bible study they convey this is what the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod teaches this is what I believe think for yourself and uh you know and I just make sure that they know what the what the official position is and and that they convey that but these are also people teaching adult classes and you know I let grown-ups be grown-ups and um, so uh, so far we haven't really had a problem and and I mean the differences aren't really drastic kinds of differences you know things like election and um, end times and and stuff like that some little bit of variation on some stuff but uh, you know, it's it's not. You know, they all believe that Jesus is God, and you know, <laughs> you know, all the the you know, pretty much the sort of stuff that you actually get in the small catechism. You know, until you start getting into the real nitpicky um, theological stuff, and it's probably because they've spent so much time reading the Bible. Um, Dale is getting liberal. <laughs> That's all there is to it, man. Yeah, I encourage my people to read the Bible. It's liberal. That's awful. Man, I'll tell you, out there. Well, okay, so that's one side of it. The other side of it, though, is, you know, um, how, and maybe it's a question, how, 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 you know, especially within the Catholic Church. I mean, when the Catholic Church, this one guy's arguing, he says that the church is a communion. The church's teaching is meant to be a service. Um, you know, is this to say that the church is a reliable guide, more reliable in these matters than what I read elsewhere? There's something more transcendent than just my own judgment. I mean, here's, you know, I mean, you know, does it do right for, you know, someone to teach in a church and publicly disagree with the doctrine? Right. Yeah, especially if she's teaching CCD classes. You know, this is to to people that are, you know, to kids, to people that are just coming into the church and, and things like that. Um, yeah, you know, you, you probably want, if, if you have somebody teaching the basics of the faith, you want them to be, either be on board with those teachings, or else you want them, you want to sit down with them and say, look, I understand that you have differences here, all right, but if you're going to teach these classes, we really need you to teach, this is what the Catholic Church teaches. Yeah, I mean... Because you're uh, a representative uh, of the yeah, organization. What? You're a representative of the organization. Yeah, yeah. On the other hand, I mean, I can't dis- dis- disagree with this woman. It's Kathleen Riley. She says, the bishops are human. Sometimes their judgment is not God's judgment. We always have to be vilig- vigilant about that. Mm-hmm. The Holy Spirit gives the responsibility to look into our own consciousness. The problem is, that what she just said there is, the Holy Spirit gives us responsibility to look into our own consciousness. No, the Holy Spirit gives us responsibility to look to his word. Right. What does his word say? You know, and that's it. That's not. I mean, Luther himself said, you know, that would she she would get no argument from Luther. Luther would say, yes, the bishops do err. Mm-hmm. You know, but it is not. Uh, uh, here I stand in, um, you know, on my conscience. But here I stand on God's word. I can do no other. Right. Yeah. He said, unless you can show me from God's word where I'm wrong, right, I will not recant. So yeah, not important distinction there. Very important distinction. Very important difference. Uh, um, yeah, I, yeah, you know, it's. I I understand that you know some liberal Catholics are going to struggle with where Catholicism is. It's going in a more conservative direction mm-hmm. than what many of them wanted to go. Yeah, uh, yeah. There's a real sort of uh, because things have uh, among the laity, especially, and some clergy have have gone more liberal there's a, a real sense of kind of a kind of a knee-jerk reaction um to to really tighten the grip and and um and go more conservative so. right. well part of the issue is when you're a worldwide communion as they are and the opinion of americans and the europeans is very different from the africans and the asians and the, you know maybe the new christians right they're much more conservative mm-hmm. um and uh you know and that's the same problem. That's exactly the problem the Episcopalians and the Lutherans are facing. Yep. Uh, there was a very interesting statement by the African uh, bishops on sexuality, which basically took issue with all the northern Europe with the, with the ELCA and the northern Europeans. 
you know, and just saying we're, we're tired of sick and tired of being treated as second class citizens. This is what God says. We can't say anything else. We don't know where you guys are going. Mm-hmm. You know, so I think it's going to be interesting to see where, you know, that that goes in the, within Roman Catholicism, where it goes within um, um, uh, the Lutheran World Federation and other things as the center of Christianity begins to move to Africa and to um, Asia. Yep. I mean, well, you know, we we you know we you and I know America is becoming much going to just become much less uh, Christian. You know, and I think, uh, you know, the center of Christianity is going to move somewhere else. Not if I have anything to say about it. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, well, then, just if, you know, that wasn't exactly one of the nice, you know, so they got those struggles. Well, then we had the, our good friend for the Freedom from Religion Foundation. Man, these people just keep popping up. <laughs> oh, man. It's like... <laughs> like acne <laughs> uh, you know so um, uh, I, I, I thought this was really it was actually pretty ironic um, it's new billboard uh, that says quit the church and uh, it's in Texas on Interstate 30 and there, there's not going to be too many people who are going to disagree with the Catholic Church in Texas I mean they're Catholic I mean those people are hmm <laughs> You know, the Catholic Church doesn't say anything about cowboy boots and hats, you know, but. <laughs> so, yeah, it, uh, let's see. Um, so the, the, it includes the message that the Catholic Church should put women's rights over bishops' wrongs. Um, so specifically referring to the um, uh, HHS mandate. Right, and the, the uh, Obamacare lawsuits by the, which are not just by the Catholic Church, by the way. Many Protestant organizations and colleges are uh, taking part of that. And, and Jewish. And this is probably the coolest thing. I don't know if you'd heard about this. There was a Catholic uh, family in um, Denver. Man, I should have probably put the story up. I forgot all about it. Um, but, uh, yeah, a Catholic family in Denver um, that owned a heating and air conditioning company, and they self-insure. And so they were going to be under the mandate as of – November 1st, that's what their insurance uh, renews. And so they sued uh, the Obama administration, claiming freedom of religion, uh, particularly under the Freedom of uh, Religious Freedom Restoration Act. And uh, the judge, who was a um, either Jimmy Carter or Bill Clinton appointee, I can't remember which one, um, bound for them and mm-hmm. issued the injunction, saying this would be clearly a violation of their religious beliefs, their freedom of association. Uh, a couple other things. I uh, didn't even argue the um, First Amendment, but just said, "Here's federal regulation under uh, Religious Freedom uh, Religious Freedom Restoration Act," and hmm. you know they have no right to overturn federal law. Wow. Well, that should be interesting because I'm sure that that's going to, um, yeah, the that's going to get appealed and and move up and. Well, it's 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 a, it's a temporary injunction pending full. Uh, trial and everything, but right, right. the fact that he would grant that injunction is is pretty significant. Yeah, uh, and it, it was just huge. Uh, and if a private citizen can get that, surely these church-owned organizations are going to get it. Oh, right, right, exactly. Because obviously, yeah, the, we're talking private citizen. It's like, uh, yeah, uh, church. Um, <laughs> should churches have religious freedom? Uh, duh, you know. <laughs> right. Well, of course, these are not churches per se. Yeah. I know, but it's still, it, you know, when, you know, affiliated with a person as opposed to affiliated right. with a church, you know. Uh-huh. Um, so I, I, I thought I love the the quote here on back to this uh, billboard yeah. article. Um, it's been all women who've called in to say they were offended and upset by the billboard, <laughs> which is uh, said someone uh, with the Annette Gonzalez Taylor with the Catholic Deci- the Catholic Diocese of Dallas. Yeah, you know, so, uh, I'm always amused by you know the people that are you know saying, "Oh, we need to defend women's rights," and then all the women that say, "Shut up and go away and leave me alone." Well, I get here's this this you know, um, from the Dwight Dallas Fort Worth Coalition of Reason. I don't like them imposing their religious beliefs on other people who don't have those beliefs. 
said Terry McDonald with the uh, Dallas Fort Worth Coalition. Co- no, I, I, it's just the opposite. The mm-hmm. core, the, the government is forcing its beliefs upon people who don't hold those beliefs. Right. All these churches, all the the Catholic Church is saying is for our church associated affiliated agencies. Um, we don't want you to impose that we have to, you know, pay for certain. Or pay for contraception and abortion and sterilization and those types of things that we believe are wrong. Right. And if you don't like it, don't work with our or, you know, right. d- deal with our church affiliated things. It's like you don't like the church, but you don't want to give up all those agencies that the church supports and, and erects and, you know, and puts out there. It's like make up your mind. Do you like the church or not? <laughs> right. Well, you know, I mean, yeah. So, uh, um, <laughs> Can we Ben and Jerry's? <laughs> Go work for Ben and Jerry, right? <laughs> or Google or somebody else. But, you know, I mean, you you could get, uh, of course, myself, what I think would be the easiest way to do, take care of this, is just to do away with employer-based health care entirely. Employers just take what they currently pay out in premiums, give it to the give it to people as part of their pay. They can pay for their own insurance that is tax exempt the way it is currently for the businesses. Uh, there's no no, and then you can decide what kind of insurance you want and what coverage you you need. And yeah. you know, and, and as long as the as long as there are ways to to get, I mean, individual insurance is a lot more expensive than employer insurance because of the group rates and stuff like that. But if you know if you changed all that, then that would that would adjust all that because there would no longer be group rates. And so they would have to adjust it accordingly. Right. You, you, you can do that easily enough, I'm pretty sure. I mean, I mean, you know, you, 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 they, they could work that out. But it would be a lot. It would, it would you know, I mean, that way you, you, you want, you know, full bore coverage that I have no deductibles and, you know, everything. Then you can pay for that. And if you want a high deductible plan, you can pay for that. If you want no insurance and you want to put the money in the bank and just take your chances, uh, you know, you can do that too, you know. I think it'd be make things a lot easier. But anyway, it's I never was talking here, but I okay. Um, now this was an interesting. Let's, let's move on to a a a. a uh, I thought this was kind of obvious, you know, but I thought this was kind of interesting that uh, two scholars, one Christian and one Muslim, uh, have written a letter to a number of hotels asking them to remove pornography from their. Uh, from the company's in-room movie selections. Uh, Robert George, who is the past chairman of uh, the Conservative National Organization for Marriage, and Shaikh Hamza Yusuf, um, co-founder of Zaytuna College, a Muslim school, wrote them and asked them to do this as a matter, matter of conscience. <laughs> Companies don't have consciences. Unless they're Chick Fil A or Ben and Jerry's. Yeah. <laughs> <Hang on. laughs> All, right. All right. So I, I I did think it was interesting. Uh, there there was a couple things in this article that that caught my attention. Um, number one was the comment by Craig Gross, uh, who's the pastor and founder of Triple X Church, um, which the the name is. Uh, they they do a lot of work with helping people with pornography addiction. Um, it's not that they're a risque church. They they want to restore a biblical yep. uh, perspective on marriage and and sexuality, and um, <clears throat> so so he, he says the letter's an empty gesture with no power behind it. It's got to be one of the dumbest letters I've ever read. It's like asking the internet to stop selling porn. It sounds good and all, but it isn't going to happen. <laughs> so now they do mention that um, folks on the family got the Marriott chain to do something about it. But the Marriott's are owned by Mormons. And, right. you know, so they already have church ties. So, you know, that's sort of like asking Chick-fil-A to make sure that they don't put risque stuff on their, you know, bags or something like that. Like, oh, right. okay. <laughs> you know, that's a no And uh, uh, Omni Hotels uh, began doing that in 1999. You know, I mean, okay, you know, no, no, I mean, they argue, um, 
Uh, uh, it's, 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 you know, according to a 2005 report, now that's seven years ago, so who knows where the number is now. Probably worse. Um, you know, 55% of hotel movie rentals are porn movie rentals. Um, you know, uh, uh, now, uh, on the other hand, movie rental revenue for hotels in general decreased by about 40% into 2011. Um, but even with a reported slip, other critics acknowledge there's a demand for adult entertainment. Um, so I'm not sure where this goes. I mean, Gross argues, what difference does it make? Uh, you know, if they have access to, uh, you know, Wi-Fi, are they going to go that direction? You know, uh, and maybe they will. On the other hand, I, I don't know. I just, you know, I know, I'm, you know, I just wonder, you know, what, what, what is healthy here? I mean, you know, maybe, maybe, I mean, you know, obviously, uh, hotel chains are businesses. They're just going to respond to whatever the market wants. Mm -hmm. If the market wants it, the people want it, it you know, most of these are, are business or, or convention hotels that they're, you know, that, you know, if it, it's being used and being paid for, then it's going to be there because it's profit for them. That's all they're interested in. Mm -hmm. um, but maybe some of them will sit back and go, eh, maybe this isn't the best thing to do. I don't know. What are you thinking? Well, okay. I mean, first of all, porn is bad. All right, let's just establish that. Um, I've had people argue with me about that lately, which sort of surprised me. But um, but it is, and and you've heard me say on this show that um, the, the people that are arguing about gay rights, uh, frankly, um, the, the pornography has done a whole lot, lot more damage to uh, marriages in um well at least where it's readily available which with the internet is everywhere um than the gay rights lobbies ever have um but uh and and i and i think it's it you know it, it's demeaning it's uh dehumanizing uh it's all kinds of problems all right so looking at these companies you know if they could get companies to uh, these, um, you know, hotel chains to stop having them available. Yeah, I think that'd be a good thing. You know, I, I think that accessibility just makes it easier when people used to have to go into the uh, convenience stores and you know ask for the magazines that are behind the counter and all that kind of stuff. There are a lot less people using it nowadays. The average um, age of exposure, first time exposure to pornography, is like. 10, 11, something like that because of the accessibility on the internet. I mean, I had a heck of a time with uh, kids with smartphones and that trying to f find all of the uh, necessary tools to filter uh, what they're looking at. Not that they're looking for stuff, but it comes looking for them. And, you know, the same goes when you're channel surfing, sitting in a hotel by yourself, you know, and the stuff comes up, it's calling to you. And, you know, the Bible says that, um, it's, it, I, and I mentioned this before on the show too, that, that the sexual sin is the one sin um, that we are not to stand up against and fight. It's the one that we're to flee from um, because people are weak. And uh, so, you know, to have it coming at you going, hey, hey, temptation, you know, um, it's, just, it's a terrible thing. And so if they can get him to get rid of it, great, but I not real optimistic that they're going to. I mean, yeah, sure, they can turn on their computers and use their Wi-Fi and that, but um, you know what? It's For some people, it's easier to use TVs. Um, I've heard an interesting suggestion that some people do um, for Christians as far as responding to this as an individual is when you go to a hotel and you're traveling alone without your spouse or you're not married, um, when you check in, Ask that the adult channels be locked. And and you might get some weird questions because, like, wait, you're traveling alone, right? Just don't use them. You know, no, just, you know, 
so that I'm not tempted just for my personal accountability. Just, you know, it's just something I do to, um, to, to make it very, um, very clear, uh, to myself and, and to my family and, and, uh, to my spouse and that, that I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not even, I'm going to lock it so that I'm, the thought never crosses my mind to use it. And, um, and so I, I thought it was a neat idea. I, it's pretty rare that I go anywhere alone. Um, so it's not really an issue for me. Um, but, uh, you know, and, and when I am in my hotel room, if I am at a conference or something like that, I'm, I'm usually like doing FaceTime with my wife anyway. So, but, um, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think this letter is going to do a whole lot of good. Uh, I, I think that the, um, the owners have probably considered this and they see the money rolling in and go, mm, uh, yeah, I think we're going to keep it there and let people make decisions for themselves. So Which, I, whether I, I like it or not, they have that right to make. Yeah. So, well, at least this is with the Olympics. Um, and it, you know, there's really not much. The article we, we found, which I found on several places on the Internet, by the way, uh, this is one of those stories that went around and uh, got uh, picked up. But uh, uh, just a lot of religion at the Internet. I thought it was interesting. Uh, religion at the Olympics. I thought it was interesting uh, that, of course, originally they were dedicated to Zeus and the Greek gods because, you know, Athens and the whole nine yards and stuff. Uh, and uh, the combination of Greek sport and worship led the emperor, Roman Emperor Theodosius I, the Christian, to ban the Olympics in uh, 393 A.D. Well, and then when it was brought back, though, it was brought back without all the, the religious um, fanfare. So, well, that's like, theater was the same way. Although, um, the the church banned theater. Uh, but that was because it was, it it got so, I mean, part of it was, it, there was a lot of uh, pagan religious elements to it. Um, it was also pretty um, bawdy. And, uh, That's putting it mildly. Yeah, um, but then again, at the same time, the church also brought theater back, right? Um, in chancel drama of all things. Yeah, well, the medi- in the medieval cycle place. Mm-hmm. Uh, but anyway, so uh, uh, um, although uh, um, you know they came back and in, in, as a secular Olympics, uh, the games began to take on a quasi-religious rituals. Uh, because of the stuff that you know that they they borrowed to shape it and stuff, and um, you know which came kind of came out of an, an Olympian civil religion. Um, you know it was you know it, it, that uh, kind of this idea of the joining together of humanity. Um, and uh, although I have to kind of laugh, um, you know that. Uh, 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 because when you know they, what they talk about the Olympic Games hoping to achieve in terms of peace and stuff, they don't do that. No, it's co- it's competition. You know? right, it's competition, I mean, and I mean you know well, this is the 40th anniversary, 40th anniversary, or 40th anniversary of the massacre of the Munich Olympics. And did they say you know the Israelis did, and did the Olympic you know committee allow any type of recognition of that? No. I heard I was watching the opening set. We, we um, recorded the opening ceremonies and, and watched it today, actually. Uh, and I did hear a reference to it. Um, the yeah. some of the com- I mean, not not in the ceremony itself, but one of the commentators um, made a reference to it. We were watching it. We have a 3D TV, and so we're watching stuff time delayed in 3D. So, so I thought it was, I thought it was interesting. It says. Um uh, gold medals since 1928 have been imprinted with the image of Nike, uh, the goddess of victory, the swoosh. <laughs> no, no, that, that's the god of money. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, this is interesting. Uh, uh, um, and although the torch relay existed in antiquity, it was not part of the ancient Olympics. It was invented by the Nazis for the 1936 Berlin Games. Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, that was an interesting. Wow. Yeah. Why did we keep that? <laughs> but it's cool, you know. I, I think they looked at it, and I, I'm guessing they went, "But it's cool. Let, let's do it." You know, who cares where it came from? Um, I, there was some interesting stuff about um, 
uh, you know, uh, Olympians, do they uh, div- uh, devote Jews and Christians? I, I suppose like Seventh Day Adventists um, must choose whether to compete on the Sabbath. I suppose Sabbath, if some Christians that don't work on Sundays um, or something like that. Um, or And Muslims, this is even a, a actually a bigger issue. Um, it's Ramadan. And Muslims refrain from eating and drinking during the day. Uh, if you got to, you know, you need to uh, get your energy up and, and, you know, and stuff like that to not eat or drink when you're competing, uh, that can be pretty tricky. So I thought this was interesting. Clerics in Egypt and the United Arab Emirates extended an exemption to their athletes, allowing them to make up their fast at a later time. Some athletes will take the exemption while others will fast. <laughs> Don't you like that? Well, God says it's okay, you know, just because you're in the Olympics, that you could do it another time. <laughs> yeah, Ramadan exemption. <laughs> but only if you're competing in the Olympics. <laughs> so, um, I, I actually, having watched the opening ceremonies, I really actually, I loved it this year. Um, there was a lot of it that I think was was like so British that I had a hard time figuring out exactly what I, I had a general sense of what stuff was referring to, but some of it was was like so thick with culture that I was like, okay, the British people are totally watching this and going, yeah, you know, and and understanding all of the different references, and everybody else is going, okay, I, I kind of get it, you know, um, the general ideas and stuff and. Um, I, I did like the big giant Voldemort, um, but uh, it, I, I appreciated there was at least two hymns, Christian hymns that were sung. Hmm. Um, they, in fact, they closed with "Abide with Me." Well, I mean, before "Hey Jude," but um, <laughs> started that up. And I thought, well, let's see, we're four and a half hours into it. We're about halfway if they're starting "Hey Jude" now, <laughs> but. Um, but uh and then there was also um 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 um, um the pilgrim something can't remember now <sighs> drawing a blank but um yeah it was it was two hymns i mean the, they're in our hymnal i i recognized them and i went oh cool so that was kind of nice after what was it back it was like the los angeles ones or something like that they were just like terribly pagan um, and, and so this was, it was refreshing, um, you know, considering England's Christian heritage, uh, it really made sense to have some Christian songs, um, as a part of it. And, and so I, I appreciated that. I mean, I don't think that anybody heard it and went, I and mean, now that I think about it, they referred to the Lord, but I don't think the name of Jesus was mentioned anywhere, um, in them. But I, I mean, I don't think that anybody heard him and went, <gasps> Oh, I'm going to become a Christian now, you know. Um, but it was a nice tip of the hat. So, and, and, and there was nothing in it that I found that that I went, ah, oh, that's sort of offensive, you know. Um, so I, I, I appreciate it. I, um, <laughs> on the other hand, you talk about the Olympics. Uh, there's also, um, within the Olympic Village, uh, the, uh, the, the stories run pretty rampant about um the promiscuity that they uh hand out uh condoms and things like that uh to the athletes <laughs> while they're there. Uh so some people uh worship other ways. If you can't be an athlete, be an athletic supporter. Now we could have gone to the to to to, to the porn uh, hotel porn stuff. But no, you did that first. That would have been a perfect segue. <laughs> I want water, so, but you know, yeah, I mean. I, this is this is a good example of the of something that that started out um, pagan that has pagan roots. And in fact, this would be interesting. Like when we talk about Halloween, do you celebrate Halloween because it has pagan roots and there's pagan elements to it, it that that still remain? Okay, um, but for most people, they don't see it as an act of pagan worship. It's all about uh, wearing funny costumes and you know and, and getting free candy and um, you know and, and so you look at this this has pagan elements to it it has pagan roots you know um, do you are do you, you know do you ban your family from 
watching the Olympics. And I, I've never known anybody that said, oh, the Olympics, Olympus, Zeus, no, no, we're not going to, you know, I've never, I've never, you know, the only people that I know that do that are the people that don't have TVs. <laughs> and it's not, it's not the Olympics. They just, you can't watch it. You don't have a TV. But, um, so, I, you know, I, to me, if it's, I'd be interested if anybody out there is really, you know, doesn't participate in Halloween, um, which is fine. You know, you follow your conscience, like I said before. Um, but if you don't, and if it's because of those sort of pagan elements to it, um, how do you feel about the Olympics? Do you see that as, as different? Um, do, you, do you think I'm stretching it here, or um, or you know, do you think that uh, that I've got a point? So something to think about. Mm-hmm. So is that it for this week? That is. Well, we hope you all have a good week this week. I think we'll be back next week for August 6th. And then we'll be gone for at least two weeks while I am gone. And we'll figure out from there. Yeah, I think I'm gone the week after that. I'm not sure. So, yeah, August is going to be pretty sporadic. <laughs> but I'll get caught up on getting these things posted, though. <laughs> all right. So, so meanwhile, Take send care, us everybody. your comments. God bless Wait. your week. And uh, if you have any comments, you can get a hold of us uh, by... Uh, emailing us at podcast or com, or uh, just leave a comment on the if you're watching this on YouTube or uh, or you can leave a comment on our Facebook page uh, or anything like that so okay take care good night everybody God bless